you know, uh, going into the situation and hearing that you were having a heart attack um, and knowing that that doesn't always mean that um, everything's going to be okay. The idea that I would be here with our f four children and not have you just seem too unbelievable. So that's all I prayed against, you know, is just let her be here with me. I love you. Love you. Um, let's see, June, it was a perfect day outside and I wasn't feeling my best. I was really lightheaded and I had a, like a ache pulsating like the left side of my neck, like up to the left side of my head. You know, it was scary because I had no idea that I was having a heart attack. Didn't even cross my mind. I just thought, you know, I had a baby a few weeks before. I was literally just going to lay down, like knowing that I could have went to sleep and never woke up. And so I had called you and then you told me to check my blood pressure. So I did and it was really high. And when she called and let me know how high it was, I Googled it, of course, to see, you know, what that might mean. And it was nothing good. So uh, that's why I made the suggestion to go to the hospital and get checked out. They got me back there pretty quickly and it was like, just a rush of a lot of nurses and staff in there getting me all hooked up and did blood work immediately and got me hooked up to all the monitors, did the EKG, and um, they came back pretty quickly and let me know that I was going to get transferred to Kansas City. Your mom's headed in for her angiogram right now. Hi, babies. I love you. Hope I get to see you today or tomorrow. Love y'all. I miss you. Yeah, there was a lot going on. Not a whole lot of sleep, mm -hmm. a whole lot of testing, a whole lot of questions. Maybe this, maybe that, and I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, you're so young. They determined that you didn't have any blockages or anything, mm -hmm. and uh, that was good news, but mm -hmm. it still left a question mark as to why. Um, that's when they were explaining to us that you probably had had some virus probably during the pregnancy and um, had weakened your heart. And two weeks after finding out that I was diagnosed at 33 with congestive heart failure, I found out that we were pregnant. You know, finding out I was pregnant, I knew that it was not a good thing. Um, I knew that there were, you know, there were going to be some complications and, you know, obviously being high risk. Um, and I remember sitting in there and doctor after doctor, nurse after nurse, like coming in and like filling the whole right side of the room. I felt like I was just backed against the wall. Um, and, you know, basically them, um, telling you that you have a choice, but I mean, you can choose to terminate or you can choose to pretty much probably die and leave your kids and your husband without you. Like, um, you know, I can't as a mother and as a Christian make that decision myself. I mean, it's just not something that I could do. And so they asked you, Yeah. Um, I couldn't imagine um, carrying on uh, with our family without you being a part of it. So when you hear the story about Mary and Quentin and how profound this is, you couldn't understand why we put the work in that we do to be 
in the prime of your of your life, healthy, looking forward to a new baby, and to have a, a life-changing event is, is devastating. So Mary listened to her gut, and if she hadn't put it out there, and if she had laid down for that nap, maybe we wouldn't even get to talk to Mary and Quentin today. So trust yourself. Women are more likely to have atypical symptoms, which is one of the things that we always reinforce to our patients is that if something doesn't feel right, it's time to speak up, make sure that we're not missing something more. Telling my story is not the easiest thing to do. And you know, it puts me in a very vulnerable situation, but I pray and I pray hard that in doing so, that we can save at least one person. Mm -hmm.